Hello ladies and gents, this time we're going to talk about types of collisions. There are three primary types of collisions where momentum is conserved. They are called elastic, inelastic, and perfectly inelastic collisions. So let's go through each of these. First off, an elastic collision. And once in a while, depending upon the author of your textbook, it's going to be called a perfectly elastic collision. So again, that's kind of a preference in the English language. But an elastic collision is one where momentum is conserved, but also the kinetic energy of the system is the same before and after. Now, what's an example of an elastic collision? Let's say I have a bouncy ball, a tennis ball, something like that, and I drop it. If I drop the ball and it hits the ground and it comes back to the same exact spot and it has a hundred percent bounce back, that is an elastic collision. No energy is lost. So all of the potential energy I had here went into kinetic, came back into the object and turned back into potential energy. So you have this whole event without any energy loss that is a perfectly elastic collision. How common is perfection in the world? Well, the answer is not very. Um, and so elastic collisions are very, very rare. Um, in reality, where do you see them? Well, the things that come closest are gas molecules when they bounce off of a surface or in the realm of subatomic particles colliding. Let me give you an example about gas molecules. How often do you have to fill your tires up with air? Now, I know you're a broke college student and so you ha might have terrible tires that are leaky and you got to fill them up every day. But I'm talking about normal people that don't have, you know, bad, bad tires. How often do you have to fill them up? You know, you might check them once, twice a year. It's not that big a thing and hopefully your tires are going to hold their air. Well, what gives your car tires pressure and keeps them inflated, this is a side view of the edge of a tire, is inside of that tire there are gas molecules. And those gas molecules, the oxygen, the nitrogen that's in those tires, are bouncing off the walls at night, crazy fast speeds, hundreds of miles an hour. But that produces the pressure that actually keeps your tires inflated. If every time a gas molecule bounced off the inside of your tire, it got a lower and lower and lower and lower bounce, we would not use gas-filled tires in order to put on our cars. We'd have to use some sort of a solid tire. But this works because the collisions in gas molecules are very, very close to being 100% bounce back. Now, if you fill your tires up with air and you don't go near them for like 20 years, you know, you find some old car in the garage that was your grandpa's, well, yeah, probably the tires have been deflated quite a bit, if not totally flat, because they are not exactly 100% perfect. But they are so close that we can pretend that they have elastic collisions. Matter of fact, those of you who have ever had any chemistry, there is something in chemistry called the kinetic theory of gases. And the kinetic theory of gases is how we describe gases and our gas laws. And one of the assumptions of the kinetic theory of gases is that gases have perfectly elastic collisions. Okay, if this is such a rare thing, why do we even talk about it? Well, we talk about it because there are some objects that act like perfectly elastic collisions um, in the macroscopic world, in your experience and my experience. These things happen to be very hard, very dense, and have a lot of springiness to them. What do I mean by that? The things that are really dense and solid, like the balls on a Newton's cradle. This little gizmo here is called a Newton's cradle. And if you pull one of the little balls back and you let it go, it transfers momentum all the way through the chain of balls and it will come out through the other end. Now, if you've ever played with one of these, and if you ever get a chance, I highly encourage you to because it's a hoot. Um, the height, the initial potential energy you give the system here after it goes through once will be pretty much the same of the potential energy that the ball ends up with out the other end. But if you let this thing swing back and forth and back and forth for a minute or so, the actual swinging altitude is going to get less and less and less and less. Why? Because energy does get lost. And where does energy get lost? Same place energy usually gets lost. Sound, heat, and friction. And if you can hear a 
collision. That means some sort of energy is being lost because of the fact it takes energy to actually produce sound waves. Another example of a very elastic collision is billiard balls. Um, you've got the eight ball, you've got a pool ball sitting here. The, the original eight ball has a velocity of zero. Pool ball comes in, schmucks the eight ball, and the pool ball has a velocity of zero, and the eight ball goes out with the same velocity, or darn close. And that is because these things are designed to be very hard, very dense. When I say springy, I mean hard things that will spring back. This is not Nerf, and this is not SpaghettiOs, and this is not stuff that's squishy. We're talking about hard things like steel. Now, crumple zones in automobiles are the front area of an automobile that is actually designed to crumple. These do not engage in elastic collisions. When auto manufacturers produce a car, what they want is not to have elastic collisions, and they actually want the car to slow down because energy is absorbed. Why? Because it protects you and me as the drivers and the passengers in the car. So this is definitely not a situation where the collisions are elastic. Most collisions that are out there are going to be the second major type of collision, which are called inelastic collisions. What's an inelastic collision? You get some bounce back. You drop a ball from this height, and it comes up, and then it bounces again, and comes up, and come, bounces again, and comes up. The better the super ball, the harder it is, the harder the surface it's bouncing off. It might bounce further every time, and it might have a lot more bounces, but eventually all the energy is going to be dribbled away. Some of the energy is going to go to sound. You can hear the ball hitting the ball before and after. This one is going to be a smidge warmer, meaning the molecules inside of it are going to have a little bit more speed. And the table itself is going to be a little bit warmer, not also including, but also including the um, air resistance. As it's flying through the air, there's going to be a little drag. So in an inelastic collision, like you drop your food on the kitchen floor, which is messy, but we've all done it, um, kinetic energy is not conserved. The third kind of collision are perfectly inelastic collisions. Momentum is conserved, and the objects typically stick together. I refer to these collisions as hits and sticks. Um, if you have a car accident and you end up with the car's locking bumpers and then the whole mess slides one way or slides another way, the whole wreckage. In these collisions, kinetic energy is certainly not conserved. Again, because energy is going out into those three biggies, sound, heat, and friction. But uh, the nice thing about these kind of collisions, which makes them friendly to do math with, is at the end they have one shared final velocity. So that is really, really handy. All right, I think that does it for this time, and we will see you later.